my team discovered uh, Salam, this one, a skeleton. And this skeleton represents the earliest and most complete infant hominin ever found in the history of paleoanthropology, as I told you earlier. It's a skeleton of a three years old girl who lived and died 3.3 million years ago in an area called Dikika, which is in the northeastern part of Ethiopia, and belongs to the species known as Australopithecus afarensis, which is a Lucy species, in other words. Once you've found something, of course, you have to keep searching for more. So that's what we did. And we were screening, sifting, and uh, search on the hillside. And that took us four to five years. And you can see people, including myself here, basically crawling all the way from the spot where she was found first, all the way down to 200 meters. And you do this over months and months and months and for four years. And after doing that, we were happy because we continued find, finding bones that belong to the same individual. Here is the sheen bone. Here is part of the shoulder blade. You can see the ribs that are still in contact. This is the lower jaw. You have a complete foot with the metatarsals here. You have a still articulated shin bone and a thigh bone. Basically, after she died, she was buried something in this position, if you wish. Uh, of course, when I say buried, there was no formal burial. This is three, over three million years ago. So the river would have uh, taken her away and put her in the sedimentary gate, in sedimented. So anyway, we were happy. Over four years, we were able to recover over 60% of the skeleton. And compared to Lucy, Lucy is 40% complete. This is a 60% complete in addition to the face. OK. Once we have that, then the next question is then how do we actually know these are human needs or they belong to the human ancestors? OK. First of all, forget this. Look at the chimpanzee of the same age. This is an infant chimpanzee. This is a tongue child. And this is George Bush when he was a child. <laughs> and so what, 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 OK. So I just chose it because uh, I didn't have any other picture. So anyway. <laughs> So what, what, what you do, what you do is basically you compare uh, humans, other known fossils, and chimpanzees. You clearly see that you have a forehead here. And the child has a forehead also. And this individual has a forehead. And this is missing in apes. And this is because of the development of the prefrontal cortex. And you don't see a very projecting canine here. OK? You don't have it here, but you have it here. So we can tell they belong to the human family tree very easily based on the anatomy of the bones. And you can also tell that they indeed belong to an upright working species. When you do the detailed analysis of the uh, bones here. I, I'm not going into the details, but there are many features clearly showing that she belonged to an upright working individual. So we know that she belongs to our family tree. Uh, by the way, uh, you left at the picture, but if you have a forehead, everybody has a forehead here, right? <laughs> yeah, no other animal or primate has a forehead because this part of the brain is not well developed, so they don't have a forehead. They have a more <coughs> posteriorly receding uh, frontal region on the forehead. They don't have it. With the forehead, does that mean like our hips evolved too? Because like the bird? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, you're right. But I, I, you can ask me later about that.
So anyway, so if we know that she belongs then to the human family tree, how do we know whether she was a girl or a boy? That's an interesting question, I think, right? We know because, uh, you know, in gorillas or chimpanzees or other primates, there is something called sexual dimorphism. It simply means that males are larger than the females, and males have larger canine tooth than the females. And what we did was that we went deep into the mouth with a CT scanning technology here, because what you have here are the baby teeth. But inside here, you have the still growing adult teeth. So when we measured this teeth, which is a canine tooth, it was clear that it was a very small canine. And we know in the Lucy species, it had larger canine teeth compared to the females. So she was a girl. When you're a baby, you have the baby teeth, but also inside, you don't see them, you have the still growing teeth. It's when the teeth grow and push the baby teeth that you shed your teeth. So based on that logic, you can very easily ask how much time would be required to accumulate this amount of teeth in a child's mouth, and that was about three years of age. So the individual died when she was about three. So in conclusion, I would like to say the following things. What we have here is a 60% complete skeleton compared to that of Lucy, who is 60% complete. But what we have here is a face clearly documenting for the first time that the anatomy of infants was like this 3.3 million years ago. In addition to this completeness, this skeleton also includes the hind bone, the shoulder blades, the fingers. So it's basically a lamp. This is a, a skeleton which will give us so much information and help us understand how we look like over three million years ago and how our ancestors also look like over three million years ago. And the fact that it's a child, it's a juvenile infant also gives us additional information because, as you know, children have bones that are softer than adults, they are not completely fused, and they don't really make it into the fossil record often. So this is a rare opportunity to look into how infants looked like over three million years ago. And in addition to being very important to paleoanthropology, this discovery is also symbolically important to the whole humanity because specimens like this clearly show that we, all homo sapiens on the planet Earth today, maybe we look different facially, but we are all united by our ancestors and we belong to the same origin and the same species today and we share a very common ancestry all the way up to six to seven million years ago.